Hey, what's up, you scallywags? Welcome back to Twilight Princess Randomizer. Last episode was pretty boppin'. We found the Lantern, Gale Boomerang, and Iron Boots, pretty much all back to back. So we got some good progress going forward, and because of that, we were able to enter the Goron Mines. I'm gonna knock this little guy out of the way real fast. So we only have one key right now for the Goron Mines, so we'll see how far we can make it. If I remember correctly, this dungeon has like three or four keys, so we'll see what can happen. And then we also don't have the bow and arrow, so once we get to a certain point, we're not going to be able to go any further unless we find that. But that's okay. Even if we can't make it all the way through, we'll make a little bit of progress. When we come back through later, we'll be able to make even more progress. Okay, so right here we want to, I think, just weigh down this switch with our heavy boots. These boots are stylish, though. These are some Hylian Tims on Link's feet. I love Tims. They're such cool looking shoes. They're just pretty expensive though. But hey, New York knows how to make shoes. And that's why Link got Hylian Tims. Dude, okay, this is one of my favorite things about this dungeon, is this gigantic massive central room. Twilight Princess just does dungeons just right, like in the most fan service -y way. It's so awesome. You know, I also hate when people say that Twilight Princess is just like a copy or a clone, a nicer clone of Ocarina of Time. It totally isn't. And this is totally an awesome move to find. The back slice. Wait, is this the one where you roll around? Oh, it is! This is my favorite move! Yes! Back slice is pretty OP. Check this out. You can roll around an enemy and hit their back, and they can't do nothing about it. They just gotta take the hits and move along with their lives. Okay, I don't need to kill these guys. But that move is so satisfying. I'm glad we have that already. But the reason we're in the Goron Mines right now is we're looking for the three few shadow pieces. Or Link isn't really looking for them, Minna is. Because once we find them, Minna reclaims her true powers that she had in the Twilight Realm. So the first three bosses and the first three temples in this game are all the way they are because they got few shadow pieces, which ended up transforming them and giving them godlike powers. The boss of the Goron Mines is actually one of the Goron Elders who ended up getting transformed into like a gigantic evil fire Goron. The fact that we've already used our key has got me feeling a little bit afraid. But hey, coming in here was worth it in the long run because we got the backslash. Okay, and that's not even worth my time. Killing some of these fire alligators. No, oh my god, Link, I'm so sorry. Ooh, falling in lava is graphic in this game. That was hard to watch. One thing I wish Minna did is I wish she would give us little bios on the enemies. I, mean, I don't think she's from this land, so I would I don't think she would know that information. But I really enjoy being able to I'll target enemies and find out what their names are and get a little bio. Okay, I'm gonna have to kill this one. Is Ball and Chain the best strategy here again? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Sheesh. Much faster than my wooden piece of scrap. Okay, we're just gonna casually pull the wall, you know, as one does. Then it's a race against time. No lava geyser, get out of my way! Fire alligator, I don't want to hear it right now. Ooh, who put spikes on the wall? Dude, people are messed up. What kind of architect? Okay, pay attention again to like how you sink in this game in comparison to Ocarina of Time. You just you just go straight down. Like it just pulls you down. It's so much more realistic. Whoa! And then, all of a sudden, fucking magnets. How do they work? We'll never truly know the answer to that question. It's just magic. Oh, look at this little steam pot. It kind of reminds me of a gyroid. Ew. I do not like his back. That looks stinky. How come you have a bunch of stinky sulfuric air coming out of your back, bruh? I thought I felt a presence, but what a surprise to find a young human. Where did it come to me of you? And if Goncora has faith in you, then your heart must be true. I am one of the four Gorn elders. Gorimoto is my name. You are heroic, young man. Please, you must lend the tribe your power. 
Can anybody off the top of their head name all the Gorons inside this dungeon? If you can, you are a master at life. Okay, so we actually gave us a key split. Was he supposed to do that? I think so. I can't remember. But yeah, the key for this dungeon is split into three pieces. And dude, I think that's our first heart container, which you get from beating bosses. So that just put us up to six. Oh, there's the other key shard. Are the key shards kept within this dungeon? How do I... There it is. So the key shards are randomized throughout this dungeon. And we already got two of them. Does that mean that the boss keys stay within their dungeon even during key sanity? It seems to be that way. <gasps> oh my god, you guys are ready for this. Or you may be. This is the creature that Shad was talking about, the sky creature, the Oka. Phew, out at last. Gracious, once I got in there, I couldn't squeeze back out. You were a big help, thanks. Dude, what's up with this dude? Why does he have purple nipples? Shall we try working together for a while, fellow adventurer? You may not think I look like much, but I can be quite helpful. I can even warp you out of here if you want to leave. So, don't think of me as a burden. Now let's get started. Okay, he turned into a praying mantis. It's like I was looking at a book covered to Animorphs. But yeah, so that's Uku, um, even though he just transformed. Actually a pretty useful item to find inside dungeons because once you find him, you can use it to teleport out. And then, can you teleport back to where you were? I'm unsure about that. I guess the boomerang doesn't take these guys out, unless maybe I have to L-target it. I don't mind using them. I don't mind using the ball and chain. It's a bit more fun anyways. Yeah, the Oka are like one of the weirdest creatures in the game. I have no clue why they weren't in Skyward Sword. It seems like it'd be a given that they would have like continued using those creatures. Because they were on the same console. They were both Wii Zelda games. But, you know, it's just Nintendo developers being weird. But we still don't actually have the Oka or else it'd be in our item wheel. Or speaking of... I like the item wheel in this game. I think they did it pretty well. My only complaint is I wish you could equip three items instead of two. But of course they had to put Minna on the Z button. Dumb bitch. Okay, this is probably the worst room in the whole entire game. And maybe out of any Zelda game ever? Question mark? Oh crap. Can I use my- I can't use my sword on these guys. I got afraid because I didn't have a, a bow or a slingshot. So I was unsure if I could actually kill these guys. But yeah, this room is the worst because you have to just walk along the ceiling of this roof at the speed of a snail on downers. And I just don't have the patience for it. And I'm also not trying to fall because if you do fall, you have to walk all the way back around. And ain't nobody got time for that. Okay, that puts us at 10. See, we're already one-sixth of the way done with postals. That's why I wasn't that worried about post-sanity. Okay, so for your guys' sake, I'm just gonna fast-forward this room so we don't have to bear the length of the most annoying Zelda room ever. Okay, Jesus Christ, we made it. I do not know what they were thinking about with this room. It, like, takes away so much replayability from the game. That's how I also feel about the parts where you fill up the, the Twilight Vessel by collecting the Twilight Bugs. I think those parts were fun like the first and like potentially second time playing through the game. But after that it just felt like they kind of ruined the replayability of the game. So I'm really happy that we can take it out of the randomizer. That's why I love randomizers is it just like really makes these games more fun to replay. It just kind of cuts out all the crap. And you just get to play the stuff that you remember having the most fun with. Because like you don't need to re-experience all the cutscenes again and every single time you play the game. Randomizers just kind of turn Zelda into more of a sandbox, which we don't get to have enough of. Impaling everything. Okay, so turning this on gives us a shortcut back up here, so we'll never have to go through that annoying-ass magnetic maze again, which I was actually kind of afraid of. I just missed my bus! I missed it. But yeah, this takes you back to the original platform. We're trying to swing the other way. 
So are they mining magnetic rocks in this dungeon? Or what is the purpose of this mine? Because clearly they've evolved a lot since Ocarina of Time, where they just had a cave where they didn't have any sort of machinery or Goron made looking stuff anywhere. Okay. And that just wasn't very nice. That was my escape plan. I feel like Batman just like <laughs> rising up. See you guys later. The Batmobile is here. Okay, any treasure chests up here? No, there's a lot of crates and stuff. I'm surprised we're not fought finding rupees yet. I hope I find some because I want to buy the stuff from the the Goron shop by the spring. Ooh! It just takes one jump attack to kill these guys. That's satisfying. Wow, this chest has gills. I've never seen a treasure chest with gills before, but it can breathe underwater. There's the rupee I was looking for. That's all we need. Whoa, what's up with the skulls down here? Who's just drowning people in these parts? I'm gonna GTFO. Look, the boxes are floating. Can I throw this one in to join his friends? Yay, look. They're all just floating around together. Wait, you guys wanna join too? Here, join the squad, join the squad. Wow. I just murdered one of the crates. Oh, but that one can float. My bad, sorry about that. <laughs> so far we haven't found a single good item this episode. What gives? The temple should have more than this. I demand it. Oh my god, I hate walking slow on the walls. I do like the magnetic feature, but it can really grind my gear sometimes. This is the jump of faith right here. I'm gonna go Geronimo, put the boots on, drop faster, but then... That's some strong electricity, that's all I have to say. I mean, that's not all I have to say. I have a lot to say. Because I am a commentator and that's kind of my job. <gasps> Let's open her up! Underwater bombs! I don't think we can hold these unless we get another bomb bag. Because there is three bomb bags in this game, but we only have one. Now, if we had zero bombs, we actually would have been able to hold those water bombs in our bomb bag instead. But we can't hold two in the same pouch. So, unfortunately, it's out of the picture. Let me through. Oh, okay, we do not have any arrows right now, so those Beamos... Have you guys lost your patience yet? Maybe this wasn't the best first dungeon to do in a Let's Play. The dungeon that requires the most patience during a series where I'm trying to keep my hoes entertained? What was I thinking? I don't know, I didn't want to do Forest Temple first. Starting with the first dungeon of the game isn't that exciting for a randomizer. It's always fun to do things out of order. That's why I loved my very first Ocarina of Time randomizer where the Great Deku Tree ended up being one of the last dungeons I completed. I don't think that can quite happen during a Twilight Princess randomizer because I think all you need to get to the Forest Temple is... Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh no, we need a key. We can't go any further. That's so sad. All right, well, at least it's open to us. But yeah, I think all you need is the... Wait, I can't get back through. And that... Okay, there's a switch over here. I was going to say, and I don't have Uku. But yeah, I think you just need a lantern to go to the Forest Temple. But yeah, it was nice getting halfway through this dungeon. We'll have to come back once we find some more keys for it. I don't think we found anything useful in here, but sometimes it'd be like that. You're not always going to get a W. How do I get back? Am I stuck? It wouldn't require you to use Uku to get out, would it? That'd be kind of weird. There has to be a way to get out. Do you like have to take damage or something? Okay, I guess that works. Just use my invincibility frames and then get shot into the freaking lava. Okay, invincibility frame me, daddy. There we go. Ooh, okay, let's not fall down though. Can I jump down from over here? That's what I'm gonna do. There we go. It's kind of weird backtracking through this dungeon before, though. I've never really had to go through Guan Mines backwards before, so. 
an interesting switch up. Now we can use the elevator that the Gorons were talking about, which I feel like is a section of the mines that people typically overlook. Dude, how come all these Gorons are wearing Speedos? I preferred when they freeballed in Ocarina of Time. Now they're all self-conscious. That's one of the ways where Twilight Princess doesn't match up to Ocarina of Time. The Gorons aren't as slutty in this game. Uh, I think this opens up a shortcut back to the uh, the hot spring. Can I push it? There we go. There you go, Link. You can do anything you put your mind to. Look, here we are. <laughs> Ooh, the hot spring sh Oh yeah, it refills our health. Ah, oh, that's so soothing. I just feel my skin getting all warm and my blood starting to boil. It's perfect, okay. Let's get some more randomized stuff. Hook me up, brother. Oh, I have no bow, I can't buy the arrows. I guess I'll have to come back for that. A piece of shard. Another wooden shield. Can never have too many. Wow, we ended up making 50 rupees profit from that one. And some servings of milk. Let me fill your bottle with milk. That's some delicious milk. Okay, now we're starting to get to the point of having hearts where we don't need to worry too much. I mean, I say that, but I also game over it recently, so I guess I need to probably play better. I think if we go back through here, it will take us back to the entrance of the mountain. It's a nice little shortcut to get through to the other side. We're going to definitely have to come back up the mountain. Whoa, what the heck? Oh dang it, zigzags back up. That's interesting. Yeah, you can't come through here until you come down the elevator and push the rocks out of the way. So don't even think about it. I know you were thinking about it. And if you weren't thinking about it, I'm gonna manifest that you thought about it. And I'm gonna gaslight you to make you think that you were thinking about it. And there's nothing that you can do about it because all you were doing is thinking about it. Okay, well, we can't do anything up here. I'm gonna meet you guys back in Hyrule Fields. Let's go back to that cave we went to a couple episodes ago now that we have the torch and get that last treasure chest that's in there. All right, I'm scared, Mom. I'm scared. Mom, come pick me up. Come pick me up, Mom. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm in the back of a really, really dark tunnel and it's filled with spiders and bats and I know they want to wrap me up in their webs and eat me and not in a good way. Not in a good way, Mom. Okay, we had to come all the way back up in here, but it'll be definitely worth it because we're gonna get... Oh, is that good? Ashy sketch. Okay, her name is Ashy. Uh, I don't really know what we do with this sketch. I think it's used for something, but I'm not entirely sure. I'll look it up in between episodes. It's not that big of a deal. But yeah, that, now we have the purple paper on the tracker marked. <laughs> I'm not sure if that means anything, but hey, Purple paper. Oh, I'm seeing the purple paper actually helps with a side quest that has to do with Elia. So there is one thing we can do with it, but it doesn't do much, unfortunately. All right, now that we have the boomerang, there's another thing we can do inside the fields. Hyrule Field has a lot of stuff for us to do. We'll be coming back through here over and over again as we find more items. Because in this section of Hyrule Field, there's yet another treasure chest that we can get whenever we get the claw shot, as you can see from these targets right here. I think we need the double claw shot actually for that. Well, get away from me, bro, bro, nope. Okay, really gonna knock me off my horse? No, I can't get off my horse when you're doing this. Okay, three strikes and I'm off. I see how it works. Damn, that freaking, the goblin scream was screechy. It was like hurting my ears. It was like, <laughs> More bombs. It wants us to blow stuff up. Don't mind if I do. Such beautiful landforms. This whole entire let's play is just gonna be me oogling over the beauty of this game and how much I love it. It even looks better on the HD version on the Wii U. Although, it doesn't look perfect on the Wii U. Like the textures are better, but a part of me kind of likes the textures being a little bit more blurry. I feel like it kind of matches the more basic 
polygon designs of the enemies in Overworlds. Like, they don't quite match up, but it still looks nice. Like, I'm still really happy we have the HD version because it makes a lot of, like, the enemies and bosses and areas look cooler. It gave us a lot more awesome screenshots of the game. Ball. But yeah, a part of me likes the original version of this more than the HD version. So I don't really necessarily need, like, hyper-realistic textures when I'm playing this game. I think it almost ruins the, the art style a little bit. Not ruins, but it's just it's not as as good. Am I the only person who shares this opinion? I did not mean to use the boomerang on him again. <laughs> I just made him go on a little amusement park ride before I picked him up. <laughs> That's so nice of me. Why are we getting so many bombs? I don't need this many bombs, okay? I have the ball and chain. The ball and chain pretty much is a bomb. Splat. Yeah, there's a piece of heart in the tree. I'm not sure how it got up here, but it is our job to save it. Hey, little, don't you worry, little guy. Don't you worry, I got you. I got you. Oh, he trolled me. Trolled yet again. I honestly think it makes most sense to go to Farron Woods right now because there's a lot of treasure chests down here. Just in the area with all the fog or like all that purple mist. There's like six treasure chests in that area. It's it's wild. It makes no sense. What's up, bro? How you doing? You and your bird friends doing all right? Do we need any more lantern oil? We might need a little bit. Because we're going to have to go all over that misty area to get some treasure chests. So I'm going to buy some. Fill her up. I didn't see anything come out of that urn. It was just filling my bottle up with air. But it was premium bottled air. The most expensive air that you can buy on the market. Okay, we're in the misty woods. So, one thing that I love about the randomizer is it cuts out that sec- Wait! He didn't fill up my lantern! Did he like fill up a bottle that didn't exist or something? You've got to be kidding me. Okay, so we have limited oil right now, which really, really sucks. Because you have to you have to swing this thing constantly or else you're suffocating this freaking mist. When you're doing this in the regular game, the first time you come up to this mist, the monkey steals your lantern and you have to follow the monkey through the mist. And that's one of my least favorite things about this game. I think it makes the opening to this game just like really slow. Like, the, the opening to Twilight Princess is already super slow as is, and is like a big deterrent for a lot of newcomers playing this game, or people who like games that get straight into the action. And then you get to this part with the monkey in the mist, and it literally is just like insult to injury. It's like, let me just get to a dungeon or something. Holy crap! Coming through it as Link isn't as bad, but it's still a bit of a nuisance. But it's a cool obstacle for the randomizer. Have to at least give it credit there. Okay, I think I'm... Where's the second treasure chest? It's like elevated a bit. I can't find it because I'm being harassed by a dirty keys. Oh, here's the here's the chest. I know we're about to run out. We're about to run out. Let me at least make it to the ledge. Let me make it to the ledge. Here it is. Oh my god, I barely made it. Keys, don't you dare hit me into the mist. I, I'll end you. I'll end you. Yeah, we're gonna have to jump into it anyways. Okay. Slash shrug. I'm gonna have to go back and get more oil. Can I get more oil from him? I literally paid for some, but it didn't fill my lantern. Also, a kind of unknown shortcut about this tunnel leading through Farron Woods is there's a dig spot as Wolf Link. And if you dig here, it'll take you from side to side of this tunnel and you don't have to run through it. It's an awesome time save. Doesn't save you that much time because the cutscene and load times of you digging takes a few seconds, so like you don't save that much time. But it's still a neat little thing to know about. All right, bro, you better give me some more oil, <laughs> or else I guess we'll have to go to Lake Hylia. Can I fill it up here? No, I can't fill it. I think that's just some soup, but it's not good soup. If you drink that, it'll it'll hurt you. Oh, I clicked on fill bottle. There's a refuel lantern button. Wow, I didn't even read the options. 
I just like automatically read that top option as buy lantern because that's where you typically get it from. Okay, well, sorry about that. <laughs> Okay, so we're doing the lantern section, but I'm pretty sure there's also a post hole for us to get in here, which, is it nighttime or daytime? I think it's daytime right now. I need it to be nighttime so we can get the post holes. Oh, and I also learned that you can't skip it from day to nighttime as Wolf Link. You have to be regular Link when doing this. So as regular Link, you talk to Minna, and after she says her first line, you hold RY. What I think is nighttime now, I hope so. Because we're gonna jump around the edge of this misty lagoon. I don't think there's any treasure chest up here or anything, but yeah, there is a postal. Yep. He's right over here. Hello, little guy. Thought you could hide up inside the tree. But I have my wolf senses, I can find anything. Get out of here with your filthy money. I don't need your money. I got my own. Okay, let's see, where are we gonna jump down? I'm actually just gonna jump down now that we got that because that's all I need. Thought I was about to be choked out again, but we're good, we're good. Okay. Okay, we're almost to our destination. Well, we have multiple destinations in here, if you couldn't tell already. <laughs> Look at the map, we're trying to get up to this like weird antler thing at the top of the map. Okay, where's the trick? Oh, there it is. Just hiding in the corner. A lot of people don't even know about these chests because like it doesn't show them on the map or anything. You have to just kind of know that they're here. Starting to refill our money. Starting to collect the 2,000 rupees to get Mallows marked. Can't wait for that grand opening. It's gonna make me more excited than the day Twilight Princess even came out. An invoice? What? We're getting bills in our Zelda game? Does that show up on the tracker? I think it does, that's this portion. But we have the wooden statue as well. Does that like cover over that item? Or do we have the wooden statue and the invoice? Or do we have either? I honestly have no idea how the side quest items like fit into the side quests. <laughs> this game has like a lot of story happening while you're playing it and their side quest items in relation, and it's, it's kind of a mess how they're all thrown in here, but it works, I mean, it ends, it ends up working in the long run, and that's all that matters. Goat cheese? Huh? Oh wait, do we get that in the Snow Peak ruins from the Yetis? I think that's like one of the soup ingredients. I wasn't expecting to find that in the overworld. <laughs> Just some goat cheese. Goat cheese isn't even that good. I'm not a big fan of goat cheese. What's your guys' favorite type of cheese? Maybe we'll, I'll make a cheese tier list out of this. We'll bring back the comment tier lists. So let me know and I'll make the best cheese tier list that the internet has ever seen. Dude, these Deku Babas have some really juicy mouths. <laughs> I saw a really hilarious freeze frame of a Deku Baba and it looked like it was trying to get away from Link. It was like shocked that Link showed up. I think it was like a long lost cousin or something that you never saw at a family reunion and decided to show up after 10 years of being gone. Yeah, that's me. I'm that weird long lost cousin, honestly. <laughs> All right, what do we have here? Oh yeah, Trill. I don't need to get anything here right now because I don't have any, huh? We can get some more lantern oil. Welcome, hey, buy something, anything. Yeah, let's refill the lantern again. Let's get a dip it in. How much does it cost? 20 rupees. Okay, so we have a choice. We could pay the rupees to the donation box, or we could just be a shoplifter and run away. He's side-eyeing us right now. He doesn't trust us. You know what? I'm going to be a good Samaritan. I'm going to overpay. I'm going to give him a tip. What a generous young man. That's right. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Come back again. Anytime. I like to tip my waiters. And also, if you're interested in tipping your Let's Player, you can do so by going down to the Patreon in the link in the description and backing me on Patreon. Doing so helps financially support my channel and it allows me to keep on creating more videos. It's kind of the same as like tipping your waiter, you know, at a restaurant. It helps us out more than you would know. 
All right, what do we got here? Another Sky character. Wow, we're finding a lot of these. That's like already half of them. There's still other missing characters. Oh no. Wait, where's the hidden skill? Shouldn't there be a treasure chest here where the wolf was? Unless they like moved it. I think they moved it up here outside the forest temple entrance. Indeed they did. This treasure chest is in place of the golden wolf. A ladybug. Oh, that's so cute. And into the forest temple we go. And we currently have no keys for the temple. So let's see how far we can go. Hey bro, you got your iron in your diet? If you don't, <laughs> I got you. Okay, I think there's a treasure chest up here. It's a really sneaky one. It's just as sneaky as the one in the regular forest temple. Actually, this one's like even more sneaky than the one in the regular forest temple in Ocarina of Time. Like, for some reason I've overlooked this one more. Maybe that's because it's not required. I think it's typically just rupees. There is a lot of climbing in this dungeon. And I'm pretty sure they sped up the climbing speed in this version. But in regular Twilight Princess, oh my lord, the climbing speed was so slow. Some portions of this game would take you forever. Or a rupee. I, I can't add an O. O Oa Oopi? O Have I thought of a name for the orange rupee before? Not that I can think of, because they're not in Ocarina of Time. They don't have the orange rupees, they just have the yellow rupees. Right? No, they're gold rupees. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> the ball and chain is the perfect instrument to break these cages that the monkeys are stuck in. I can just use the boomerang on these spiders, right? Like, I don't have to be so extra, do I? Yeah, that works. I think it only works if you actually are target onto them, though. Otherwise, they just curl up a little bit. Okay, little monkey, I'm coming! These monkeys are so cute. And they have tattoos. It's because they're all part of a motorcycle game. Okay, you really just gonna drop a spider on my face like that, bro? Gonna drop a spider on my face like that. What would Jesus do? Not that. <laughs> just knock this bad boy off. This dungeon's gonna be fairly easy since we already have the dungeon item, which is the boomerang. And we already have the boss key, so I guess we can go fight the boss right now. But now to fight the boss in this temple, you actually have to free all the monkeys in order to make the monkey ladder. You know, I'm just gonna use the ball and chain. But these are the living versions of bomb shoes, or I don't even know what these are. There's so many variations of bomb enemies and plants and stuff in Zelda. But yeah, that's how you get bombs to blow this up earlier on in the game since you don't actually have the bomb bag. More perp. How do you guys feel about Forest Temple being the first dungeon in this game? I personally think it's a pretty good dungeon. I think it's pretty expansive. It has a lot of like different puzzles and there's like, multiple mini bosses. It's kind of long for a first dungeon. I'm not sure if it's like smart to make the first dungeon in the game take so long. But I personally like it. I think it has a lot of cool detail. I love having the monkey companions, personally. It makes me not feel so alone. It's Rupee Land. It's gonna make that money. Uh, if we go out here... Is the bridge still here? No, nah, the bridge has already been taken out. Unfortunate. We need four monkeys to get past here. Or we can just go from the other side, since we have the boomerang. We can just take the back entrance. So we don't even need the monkeys here. I like how they have the Deku Shield symbol on all the doors. That goes it's so hard. I guess we can only go this way. Whee! Teamwork makes the dream work, baby! Oh no, we're about to run into another Uku. Two Ukus in one episode. I don't know if that's too much Uku or not enough Uku. Oh, let's just let's just let that bomb do its job. Getting impatient with my ball and chain. Oh, look how he just pops out of the out of the pot. He's probably so afraid. Maybe those aren't nipples on his chest. 
I don't know what that is. Because they're on his back, too. Bum ba da ba bum. Dude, where's my Uku at? I want to find Uku. I love having the titty chicken in my inventory. It's the best item. Whoa. Ooh. Forest Temple is so foresty. It's hip hopping through. Oh, we got a Deku nut. Can I use this against the Skultula? I think it'll work. Oh! Took him out in one hit! Damn! Oh, sorry, monkey. I haven't found any keys for this dungeon yet. That's not good. That means we're not going to be able to do that much. I think there is a few keys in this temple. Let's go ahead and get the boss key chest first. Let's do a good ol' Zed. All you gotta do is stay a minute. Just take your time. The clock is ticking, so stay. Boss key chest be fancy. A day fly. Okay, we gotta go back to Agatha ASAP. Cause she has four more rewards for us now that we found all these golden bugs. And I want my rewards. I like my rewards. This one's just down in its own little secret passage. Okay, so in that chest that we just got the bloopy, in the HD version of the game, we would have found a stamp in that chest. And what the stamps were is they added them on the HD version of the game on the Wii U. And when you found the stamps in Twilight Princess, you could use them to decorate your Miiverse posts. A Miiverse was like a social media network for Nintendo that I took over at one point when I played Mario 3D World. But I personally don't really like the addition of the stamps because it took away from the rupee chests in the game. And also I feel like it breaks the fourth wall too much. Like finding Miiverse stamps, it's just weird. The dungeon map, let's go. We can see the whole thing, this huge ass dungeon, but it's only one floor, so it's not too confusing or anything. I guess we can just do the second half of the temple now. I can't do the first half until I get more monkeys saved, so <laughs> not really sure what to do there. Can I even do this? I think so. Let's play in this game is like kind of weirdly nostalgic for me because little known fact, but Twilight Princess was actually the very first game I made a Let's Play of back in, I think, 2010 or 2011. I was like 16 at the time, and I had a Let's Play account called Super Twitter Whore. It was like literally the worst YouTube username ever. I think I got the username idea from a Shane Dawson video, so that already shows you that it wasn't really the best option or idea. But yeah, on that channel, I started Let's Play in Twilight Princess, and I got... I pretty much got up to the Goron Mines before I ended up stopping that Let's Play and I started a new channel. And when I started a new channel, I started Let's Play in Wind Waker. And then I made it like 20 episodes in there. And then I had to make another channel again for other various reasons. And I started doing Majora's Mask and that was on the Attacking Toucans channel. And I actually finished that Let's Play. But it's not on my channel anymore due to various reasons. Which if you want to know why, I actually have a video on my account to Kana where I react to the very first Majora's Mask Let's Play episode I made like a long time ago. And it's crazy watching me react to the teenage version of myself. That was pretty wacky. Can I do this room in here? I actually like this room. Oh my God, stop bonking. But yeah, so Twilight Princess was the very first Let's Play I made. I was using a Dazzle and it was, a, from what I remember, it wasn't a bad Let's Play, it was pretty good. I remember being like very informative during it because I knew a lot about Twilight Princess. Honestly, Twilight Princess is the game that made me want to start Let's Playing. So it's kind of weird that I've never done a full Let's Play of Twilight Princess before. <laughs> but me liking this game so much, I just wanted to show it off to people. And not very many friends in real life really cared about Zelda games. They just cared about Call of Duty and that kind of stuff. And so I wanted to make a YouTube channel so I could like show it off to everybody. Cause like even back then, Nintendo Capri Sun hadn't done a Let's Play of it yet. No other popular Let's Players had really made videos over it. So I was like hoping to do that. And honestly, I was one of the first people to Let's Play it, but then I deleted those videos. Okay, Palace of Twilight Key, let's go. I think there's a monkey up here we can save. There's like, how many monkeys are there in total? Well, that's the faster way to do it. <laughs> 
What was this a PewDiePie Deku Baba? Why is this Deku Baba PewDiePie brand? <laughs> With the red and black ripples? That's so funny. Whoa, don't go sideways, Link. Gotta keep it forwards. Gotta keep moving forward, that's where progress is. Who rolled a boulder up on that doorway to keep that monkey stuck up in there? That's pretty messed up, bro. Not gonna lie to ya. Okay, now we gotta backtrack through. You see over here, there's the monkeys. Wait, why does it say we have five already? That's not right. I guess it's because typically you wouldn't be able to make it this far in the temple without saving the first four monkeys. You know, the randomizers are interesting. We see what happens when we sequence break. Typically you have to speed run to do that. But randomizers kind of lets you see that as well. Okay, somehow this one did not spin. <laughs> I tried locking onto it so hard, but it just did not want to whatsoever. Let's go back to the side. Whoa. Got me swinging side to side. How long have I been recording for? Oh, almost an hour. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and call it an episode here. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are fantastic. You're beautiful. You're smart. And hopefully I'm not lying to you. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching. Press that thumbs up button, you bitches, and I'll see you next time. Take care.